Good day, good evening everyone. I'm here with another Facebook Live. Um, if you've been following my page, I've scheduled in some lives for the next month. And um, as I've mentioned for the last few weeks, I've have been talking about furlough and career change, the ups and downs of furlough, how we can change our careers and improve our careers even during this time. I've scheduled some lives for the next month and those are very much focused on career, job searches, but also how we can use failures and setbacks to our advantage, how they can be our greatest teachers. So check those out on my Facebook page. And also, um, I've also got an Udemy course, uh, a career change course that is launching on Udemy. I'll post the link to my page afterwards as well so you can see that because it's got tons of tips that you can use about improving your career, improving your job search. Good evening, Julie. Nice to see you again. And um, so tonight I'm actually going to be talking again about furlough. I've got one more next week about furlough. But again, as I mentioned, uh, I mentioned on every video, I know that we are all in a very different place in our careers and in a different place with furlough. Some of us may still be working furiously. I know I've spoken to a lot of people this week who are still working and they're doing like the jobs of two people and some industries are really, really busy because what with the changes to furlough, working conditions, etc. Furiously rewriting HR policies and employee policies to make sure that workers are protected. But even though this video does mention the F word, the furlough word, that new word for us that's come into our vocabulary, these are tips that you can use at any time during your career. So again, I just want to preface this by saying that I know we're all in a very, very individual place with the virus and the pandemic that I know that for some of us, some of those restrictions have been lifted. But for some of us, that will be causing some angst in terms of what we can and can't do. So what I'm going to do is just share some tips tonight that will be good if you are in this position somewhere in between and just generally thinking of a career change. So, um, you know, I bet you if we'd done a, a crossword puzzle uh, a couple of years ago or a year ago, a few months ago, and somebody said retain, retain job scheme begins with F. We wouldn't have got that on a crossword, but I bet we would now. So anyway, this is a really good opportunity still, as I've mentioned before, to sort of reboot, regroup, reinvent. I don't know about you, but personally, I'm finding that I'm having the time to really sit down and reflect. Actually, in my instance, reflect about my own business, to really focus, hi Francesco, to really focus on my own marketing, my direction of the business, but also other things in my life, like new skills I want to acquire. And I think those are really important things to consider at the moment. So I feel that this is a really good time for self-reflection. And I mean, if we can't be honest now, if you are in a position to have that time of reflection, and again, I know some of us are in different places. If you've got children at home, you may be trying to school your kids at home and work. So maybe you haven't got that space. But hopefully if you go out for some exercise or a walk, you can really start to think about how to reboot, regroup and reinvent. And believe you me, I'm talking to people all the time that are not furloughing their dreams or their career. They're actually going, do you know what? This is an opportunity to figure out what I can control and what I can influence. And it doesn't matter about this, or I just didn't think this would be the job or career or business that I would be running. It's not what I thought I would be doing. I can't see me doing this forever. This we have those feelings and we ignore them. But my view is that actually those feelings start to build and build and build. And if we're not careful, it's like the wick burning down in a candle and can burn us out and be quite stressful. So, you know, I've been speaking to someone recently who was almost heading towards anxiety and we stopped. And even though there was a lot of changes going on in the workplace, we realised and worked together to say, do you know what? Here's some things that I can influence and I can change now. And actually, in reality, there's nothing keeping me from staying here. Now, some of us may not be in the luxury of that position and we have to take care of the finances and that solid foundation first. But actually, that shows great self-leadership, that inside out leadership that I keep talking about that circumstances don't dictate to you, you have the opportunity to influence a lot of them. So if it feels any better, I would suggest admitting to yourself, admitting that something is wrong is the first step. We do all sorts of distraction techniques. You know, maybe we, I don't know, 
eat lots of food, drink lots of alcohol, go out partying or stay in and party and ignore what's going on, but it eats away at us. And do you know what? Give yourself permission to go, do you know what? I hate my job. My job really sucks. And if it helps, why not like get a pillow or a cushion, hold it up in front of you and go, imagine it's your boss. Don't tell him or her that I said that, but imagine it's your boss or somebody that's really annoying and going, do you know what? I really hate my job. It really sucks. Just let that anger out. I really do not agree with repressing negative emotions. I think once we release and step into these negative emotions, we come out the other side quicker. If we keep them suppressed and suppressed and suppressed, that's what leads to burnout, it's what leads to anxiety, and ultimately it can lead to depression. So go on, I dare you. Uh, I dare you over the next day or so, or whenever you feel like it, to get a pillow and just punch it and punch it, stamp on it, let it all out and go, do you know what, I really hate my job. I nearly swore then, but I'm not going to. But you know, I've done it in other areas of my life and it's really therapeutic to get all of that energy out and go, do you know what? I hate it. I hate my job. It sucks. I've got to do something about it. When you're ready, try it. Trust me, if you live on your own or even if you don't, you can sneak yourself off into a room. Nobody's going to see it and I'm not going to say anything. I won't say anything if you don't. So just go for it. Let out that anger. And I bet you... I bet you, I don't know what I bet you, I don't know, a tin of, uh, a pack, bag of Haribos that you'll feel better after expressing that. And then when you, it's a bit like leaving a lousy relationship. There's a lot of really big areas in our life that we choose to ignore. Sometimes we stick with the wrong partner and we think, we've all done it. We maybe think, do you know what, they'll change, it'll get better. I'll change, it will get better, or things will improve if we move in together. And guess what? They usually don't because we have to communicate, we have to be open, and we have to be mature and responsible enough to admit not what, what's not working. And actually, a career is another important relationship that you have in your life or your job. You know, unless you're somebody that is, do you know what? I'm not actually bothered about my career and you just want to kind of coast through life, that's fine, that's absolutely fine. Or maybe you're doing a job in between travel breaks, but I bet you at some point in your life, you're going to want to punch that pillow, you're going to want to get it out and go, I need to do something about this now. And this is what I call inside out leadership. So what do we do once we've stopped punching the pillow? Or even, you could even stamp on it, right? Okay, so um, we can still get one on home delivery, I'm sure, if, you, if, you, if the feathers fly out. But anyway, so... Then think about what you've observed during that outburst. What did you notice? And write down all the things that you've been tolerating. Write down all the things you're tolerating and write all the things that you like about your role or your career. And it's like scales. Where, where is the balance tipping? Because when it gets to a point where we're tolerating too much, that's where the pillow really does explode everywhere and we that frustration has got to boiling point. Frustration is a really good sign of, it's actually a really healthy thing to notice, to demonstrate that you've been suppressing things that maybe we, we wanted to communicate before. And it could be as simple as having a chat with your boss or your colleague, but it may just be, do you know what, this, this lockdown has given me a real opportunity to think about, God, my job, my career choice, it sucks. And there is nothing wrong in admitting that. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean, mean you've made a mistake. It probably means that you've matured, you've grown, you've evolved. Things have happened to you in your life, either at work or in your private life. You know, perhaps your kids have flown the nest and it's an opportunity to think about your career now. Perhaps you are... You've got the option to work part time and it's, well, hang on, do I really want to do that job full time? Do I want to bring something else into the mix over time? Is it, you know, um, I've finished my degree, I've finished my studies, it's time to really think about this. So it's a golden opportunity. So get that notebook, write down, where am I now? What have I been tolerating? Uh, and just see how many things you have been tolerating because I think we as human beings we have an amazing capacity to sort of suppress our needs and then think about these questions think about mm, do you know what I haven't told anyone but I've always really fancied doing this sometimes we like to keep these things to ourselves because we feel a bit embarrassed to mention it we feel a bit 
do you know what, I feel a bit silly, um, maybe I'm too old, maybe I'm too young. There is never a right or wrong time to change your career. And studies have shown that people on average will change their careers, what, between seven and nine times in a lifetime. We work 90,000 hours in our life. How realistic is it that we're going to stick in the same job? I mean, look at the divorce rate. The divorce rate is, you know, pretty significant. The world has changed since our parents grown up. We live in a very more egalitarian society where both partners are working, you know, usually. And, you know, look at how many people stay with their first husband. Well, why not all your wife um, or your partner? So why would your job be any different? Sometimes you're going to marry the wrong person. Sometimes you're going to end up in the wrong career. It's about what you do with that information and shift moving forward. So have a think about what are you naturally good at? I've mentioned this last week in the video. Where does the time fly? What are you good at? What roles and careers, I interrupted myself there, are you naturally attracted to? Like, do you know what? I've always fancied running my own bar or I've always fancied studying psychology, but you kind of mutter it and hope nobody hears you. So um, have a think about some of those careers. Do you think, do you know what? I've always fancied doing that and figure out, is it that particular job or is it something about that job that you really fancy? Perhaps it's something around working in the outdoors, something a bit more physical, something where you can work remotely all the time. Perhaps you're loving this time of working remotely and thinking, I don't want to go back to the office. I don't want to sit on the motorway or the auto barn or the freeway for hours and hours on end. I want to have a career where I can still do that. Or... Um, you know, I actually quite like working with Zoom and being on the phone. Perhaps there's more of that that I can find in my career. I mean, the, the, the options are endless. The options are absolutely endless. So think about what careers am I attracted to and why? And start taking a look at some of the job listings. I mean, really, there's no excuse now, is there? We've got Monster. We've got Indeed. We've got Read. We've got Jobs Board. There's so many like job listings and boards where at the, at the click of a button you can tap in a search careers in i don't know physical education careers in hospitality careers in x now by all means you might want to have a look at which sectors are likely to recover when maybe that's an impetus to kind of shift if your sectors maybe going to take a bit of time to recover what could you do in the meantime if you're not working but do those searches, have a look at those job listings and go, do you know what, I've always fancied that. Just type in a few words. Google's really clever like that. It tends to find what we're looking for. And you can type in things that are much more longer tail searches now. It's a lot more sophisticated. So you can say, I want a job that does da 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 da, that I can work at home and still be working with people and helping people. And you find all sorts of things. And don't forget, Industry is really shifting. Industries are really shifting. So Twitter, they've got an office in London. I think it's London. I think it's their London office. They've actually said to their employees, do you know what? We're not going to go back to normal. There's no such thing as normal, by the way. Um, we're not going to go back to normal. When this is over, do you know what, guys? If you want to work at home, you can work at home. If you want to come into the office, you can come into the office. So your world might be shifting anyway. So, you know, your sector may be shifting. So another example is in the world of therapy. Now, traditional psychotherapy was very often about sitting in front of someone on a couch. And there is a good reason for that in terms of laying down on a couch and being open and vulnerable to relax and get into the zone and relate to your therapist but I don't know if you've noticed I noticed it last week there's more and more traditional psychotherapy services that are being delivered online like medical services so if that's something you've always fancied there's no reason why you can't be doing that remotely so that's just an example of how a couple of industries are shifting are moving which I think is like one of the positive things about this lockdown and I hope it doesn't go back to normal where we're all sitting on the motorway getting stressed I mean who needs that I mean I certainly don't so have a look and think about what jobs or careers you've been attracted to you know um, what kind of environment you like to work in indoors versus outdoors do you want a job that's more data detail driven more about people or groups of people and, and have a look at that and have a look at those job listings and again LinkedIn my goodness if that isn't the world's best free research database for careers and jobs I don't know what is make sure your profile's up to date as well by the way if you are looking for a career 
and there is an option on LinkedIn, but be careful if you don't want your boss to know you're looking, if you are employed, you can tick something to say, I am looking for opportunities. You can set up job searches. Nobody's gonna see that but you. So why not play around, set up a job search and see what comes in. It's such a great tool for finding what you like to do. So we've got, so we've started with hitting a pillow, get those frustrations out, writing down what you're tolerating and what you're frustrated in, looking at jobs boards, doing some long tail searches on Google, looking at LinkedIn, updating your resume and putting in some job searches. And then, you know, remember that sometimes job searches isn't about panicking. It's not about quantity. Hopefully it's about quality because I'm convinced that many of us have got the skills and attributes to get a job like that. A job, you know, I know some industries are really struggling. I know it's difficult in a lot of different areas. And sometimes, yes, we may have to take a job to pay the bills. I'm not saying don't pay your bills. However, that doesn't stop you thinking forward I, you know, I coached a lady that was in the hospitality industry and she said, you know what, Sarah? I said, what drew you to hospitality? She said, I'm really interested in food and nutrition and I think that's why I liked it. So we worked through her goals, we worked through a plan and she's studying to be a nutritionist. Now she's still continuing to work in hospitality. She's progressing through the ladder of hospitality. So she's already, she's taken a career jump and she's moving towards her career because she's got a plan for studying to be a nutritionist. Now, she's already looked and said, you know what, within my own company, I think there's opportunities for me to bring that education and even further my career in a different area. So you can see how, you know, improving your career and maybe staying in the same, same industry aren't mutually exclusive, but it's a great opportunity to sit down and reflect on, on all of this. So really be uh, focusing on quality rather than quantity. So, you know, that's just something I think is really, really important. Now then, there may be some companies that you think, do you know what, I'd love to work there. All companies are similar type of companies. Write them down. Write down a list of, and if you can't start with companies, write down industries or sectors, and then write down the companies. And then again, go back to your job listings. You can set up, I think, Google alerts or job alerts, and go back to LinkedIn and set up those job alerts for those companies and start following those companies. You can just click follow. If you, if you search for them on LinkedIn, then click follow, you can follow what they're doing. And for goodness sake, if you have got an interview, prepare for the interview properly and follow up properly. And again, my Udemy course, I'll share the link to that, goes into details about how you can do that. So I think, I don't know about you, but I feel that this situation with lockdown, it depends how you're handling it, everybody's different. To me, it's a bit like the good, the bad and the ugly. Some people are handling it really well, and don't get me wrong, we all have our ups and downs, I've seen it with my friends. And I think it shows the real character of people. So if you're someone that's quite a stoic, resilient person, then hopefully you are carrying those traits forward. And why not? You know, I know some of us haven't got tons of time. Some of us may still be working. Some of us may, may well be homes, homeschooling. But don't furlough your career dreams. Whatever you do, take some steps to move forward. Do it in a pace that's right for you. So as I mentioned, get the frustrations out. Write down what you're frustrated about, what you're tolerating. Then think about, well, hang on, what jobs am I attracted to? What kind of industries? What kind of sectors? Focus on the quality rather than quantity. Have a look at, you know, LinkedIn. Have a look at the job listings. Simply put in a Google search. Set up those job alerts on LinkedIn so you can see what kind of jobs there are in those sectors. And follow the companies. Have a look at their news. Have a look at LinkedIn. Follow them and see what they're doing and what, what they're getting into. You know, and it may be, you know, it might not even be a company. It could be something like a social enterprise, a university. You might want to go into academia. So, and, and, and read, do some searching around people that are working in those industries. Are they writing blogs to get the real reality of what it's like working in those particular areas of work? So, whatever you do, don't think there's anything wrong in deciding to change your career at any time of life. It's perfectly healthy. In fact, you know, it's very rare these days that number one, we stay in our first relationship and number two, 
or equally number one, we stay in our first job or our first career, we can shape, shift and change. So try and use this time wisely to get the frustrations out and create a little action plan for yourself. Now there is something that I've got for you. It's a free download and what it is is seven key questions, seven key areas. It won't take you long to do and at the end of those seven areas you'll have at least three action steps that you can take into shifting your career. If you'd like a copy of that free download, please leave me a comment on my Facebook page. Please send me a direct message and I'll happily send that to you because it will give you three steps you can take immediately to improve your situation. OK, so that was my third video out of four on furlough. Uh, I've got one more next week. And again, if you look at my page, I've got my videos. I'm doing them every Friday at six o'clock at the moment. And next month i am going to be focusing on some career areas but also one of my passion points which is all about what's wrong with failing we all fail we all make mistakes we all have setbacks and i'm going to go into even more reasons why we can be kind to ourselves during failure maybe even laugh at ourselves and kind of own our own setbacks own our own failures and use them to move forward i think sometimes we take life a little bit seriously there's a lot of pressure on all of us to be happy and successful all the time. There's a lot of stuff out there. And yes, being happy is really important. But let's also recognise that there are times where life is up and down. Like I say, it's like a bowl of spaghetti. It's not a straight line. It's a bit of unravelling that we have to do. So there you go. That was my third out of fourth video on furlough. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Don't forget to get in touch if you want that free download. And then later on this evening, I'm just coaching someone now through career change. Yes, on a Friday evening, rock and roll. Um, so I am going to be, um, yeah, as I say, sharing some more videos. And I will post the link to my career change course, which helps you maximise your chances of success at interview and to also think about what it is you do really want to do. And there's a free download that I can give to you as well. So don't forget to get in touch. Have a marvellous evening. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much for joining. Lovely to see you. And take care. Any questions, get in touch. You know where I am. Take care. Bye.